Oh, Footland, we've got starts of the week on today's episode. Are they going to be as good as Will Fuller was last week? No. They're going to be better. Plus matchups, plus Thursday night football. Check it out. Today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers is brought to you by our friends at Muggsy Jeans, the most comfortable jeans ever made. That's no exaggeration. Muggsy's high-tech fabrics are so soft and flexible, they literally feel as comfortable as sweatpants. Do your legs a favor. Head to Muggsy.com. Grab your own pair of ridiculously comfortable jeans today. Listeners can use the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off. That's M-U-G-S-Y dot com with the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off a pair of Muggsy jeans. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Whoa. Uh, we're going to need to run that one back because I was so psyched out by that intro. I didn't get to tell people it's football time. Oh, no. It's football time. There it is. They were saying it anyways. Out loud. They were, but then they were. Trust me, if I had not mentioned it. You would have heard my, some. My Twitter mentions would be a blaze of nothing. Nothing but. Mike, it's Thursday. <laughs> why didn't it's you football say, time, Mike. Why didn't you say it's football time? <laughs> <laughs> That's the voice of Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> so it's well, the Twitter and the penguin. Yes. From Batman, they're very similar. Yeah, he's the founder. <laughs> <laughs> Send your tweets. <laughs> Welcome in. Thursday, October 10th. <laughs> We're back. The fantasy footballers. <laughs> fantasy forecast on the show today. Starts of the week. Jason's boom, boom, kicker. We've got news to catch you up on. We've got, uh, I want to get your guys' opinion on a trade I made yesterday. We had some people, they really enjoyed the trade episode. I also saw some people asking, well, tell us some trades that happen in your league. Break mm -hmm. it down. Maybe it'll give us ideas on trades that I can make. So I want to get your opinion on something that happened in our league of record yesterday. Got a quick question for you. By the way, you can follow the show on Twitter at the FF Ballers, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. We're on YouTube, YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. We'll be putting up some water bet payouts very soon. Indeed. Derek Henry, you turd. Yes, yes. You can write him a letter. <laughs> send him a picture of your... What did he end at? Sopping wet 77? Head. Yeah, I believe, I believe 77 right. yards rushing. 77, and his touchdown was because Marcus Mariota ran the ball in, but then was reviewed and was called down on the one. At least you're not bitter. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's me, Derek Henry. I'm probably be in your mentions. <laughs> Here's a quick question. It comes in from Jake. In Seattle, he says, "If you're four and one or five and zero, oh, at what point do you start planning your roster for the playoffs?" He gives an example like Jordan Howard. He has a playoff schedule of the Giants, Redskins, Cowboys. Seems prime. What are your thoughts on buying players like that with great playoff schedules at this point in the season? If you have a good record, I I still think it's a little bit too early. There are uh, certain things that I would look at. I mean, I, I you always plan early, especially to me with with defenses. Defenses are one of those things that you're always streaming off the waivers. The defenses aren't always out there to scoop up, and so sometimes you hang on to a defense that just has an unbelievable uh, matchup in that in that range. That's something that I'm willing to kind of hold because I don't want to drop them on the waivers, have someone else scoop them up. As far as like trading for a player, I'm just trading for you know, the best players the rest of the season because I'm not streaming most of my players in and out of the roster. I still want to I still want to get wins. I'm not worried too much about their end-of-season schedule at this point. I would say this is probably the first point in the season you start to look a little bit because you can't make the judgment call in weeks one and two about what a good playoff schedule even is. Right, I mean, we don't have trends. We don't know what teams are good and bad. You don't know what teams are great against the run versus great against the pass. You know, home and road matters a lot in the playoffs. So does weather. You got to remember when you get into weeks 13, 14, 15, there are a lot of cold weather games. There are situations like that that you're not going to be able to foresee. Maybe you trade for a great schedule and two-thirds of those games are in the snow. So 
it's not as easy to just say, hey, I've, I've got them lined up. And you do. Like Jason said, you have to get there. And week five at four and one, it can go the other direction quickly. So I wouldn't overemphasize it now. I might start glancing. Jason brought up defenses. I'll share this with the Foot Clan. One of the things I love doing is saving fab dollars by pre-buying defenses. I don't want to compete for the best defense stream the week of. I want to have it the week before. If my bench can afford it, if my depth can afford it, those type of things. But I do that a lot. I like, yeah. you know, it sounds funny to roster two defenses, but it's a rotating situation. And so sometimes I've got one with a great matchup this week. I've got one that I already know has a great matchup next week. I paid zero fab for either one of them, and I do the same thing the next week. Yeah, the, towards the end of the season, my roster looks nothing like it does at the beginning where I have all this depth, I have all these interchangeable pieces. Towards the end of the season, I have um, my bench is full of my handcuffs and and defenses. So uh, you need to be – but like, and we don't have trends yet. Sorry, I, I forgot my point, but back to the trends like you were talking about, Andy. Look at Tampa Bay. Weeks one and two – it looked like, holy crap, their defense has completely turned things around. They're they're an elite secondary. They just shut down Jimmy Garoppolo, Cam Newton. I mean, they they just, they just squelched out any offensive fire from those teams. And then the next three weeks happen, yeah. so we are still gathering data about matchups. If you're 5-0, and oh, though, what I could be looking at is sending out those two-for-one trades to start getting more impact players for my roster. That's... If I'm thinking about playoffs and championships, that's where I'm looking at this point. I'm not looking at matchups 100%. yet. 100%. That's where, like, the the team that is one and four that has Devontae Adams, who has really hurt that team, they have to win now. You know, the, the team that has Tyreek Hill, they have to win now if they've lost their games. If you're 5-0, and oh, you can go buy those players. Right. Take, a, you know, if they're not in this week, you're going to survive, but you have excellent players for the stretch run all right hopefully that helps you out a little bit let's go ahead and get into the news news and notes from around the league presented by sleeper all right speaking of sleeper I, I was sleeping when i was woken up to jason sending a message in our slack that it's very sad chris herndon is going to miss multiple weeks Likely. What's, what's the latest Likely. that you've heard so on his situation? It's a it's a grade one hamstring uh, tear, and and so he's out this week and most likely next week. When you say that this early, it usually means it's correct. So I would expect him to miss multiple weeks. So he's been a real hurry up and cry situation for fantasy owners, right? Get back from the suspension, grab what, him early. What was he was he doing nothing during this four weeks? Ser seriously, did he go for a jog? No, he didn't want to. Did he, he pop in wanna... the AirPods and just take one around the block? I mean, come on. Uh, the Friday he was activated, he ran for the first time. He's like, I'm suspended from doing physical activity. Well, he took it to heart. Yeah, you can't be with the team. So he didn't do anything on his own? Yeah. And so. now he's hurting. Well, it's just disappointing because the tight end landscape. Chris hurting. Hurting. <laughs> Chris, Hurden's hurting. Chris hurting. <laughs> uh, David Johnson. This is a couple big stories at running back. David Johnson didn't practice Wednesday. I wouldn't have read too much into this, if not for comments by Cliff Kingsbury. Missing Wednesday after last week, there was a report that his back locked up. Okay, you know, take a day. Feel better. But Kingsbury said they're still working with David Johnson on his back and said, we'll have to see how the week goes. We're going to try to do some things today. Uh, it could be a game-time decision for David Johnson. They don't want to rush him back. I think they feel okay with Chase Edmonds. Oh, my goodness. If This is why we were talking about Chase Edmonds on the waiver wire show. So hopefully you were proactive if you have David Johnson. Even if you didn't have David Johnson, Chase Edmonds was a good pickup and stash to see what's going to happen with DJ this week. If DJ is out, Chase Edmonds is a fantastic play yeah. against the Falcons. He would be awesome. Uh, what if David Johnson is active? Are you tempering expectations knowing that yes. Chase ben Edmonds is going to have work? Yes. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's rough because it's such a good matchup. I think, you know, if he's active, you have to play him. But it's it's definitely worrisome because he could split or he could if you have both, you're be playing removed David. from the game. If David yes. Johnson's active and you have both, you're playing David Johnson. Yes. yes. Todd Gurley. 
didn't practice Wednesday either. No! However, it's been noted that it's a quad injury, a thigh contusion. Mm. So, again, not something we would have read too much into until Sean McVay talks up the depth at running back and says, fortunately for us, we've got some depth. These coaches. The confidence we have in Brown. There's also going to be a time when we're going to rely on Daryl Henderson. It might end up being this week. <laughs> Well, that doesn't help. No, and and here's because another. Because it seemed like Brown would have been the natural handcuff. What you know? Are they going to use Henderson? I would still uh, expect Brown to get the heavy work. Yes. Um. It, his. You know what he's saying can't be ignored. You know, if you're the Todd Gurley owner, and you know you you feel like you have to protect yourselves. I see, Mike. Are you just running to the waiver wire? No, no, no. So the thing is, is you have to remember the Rams played on Thursday night. This is not a day of rest. This isn't putting him on the, you know, the the injury report and listing him with something. He had extra rest and is injured. And the, he had other quotes where um, it was a surprise to them. They did not know that he was injured leaving that game. They did play Thursday night, so they've had a lot of they've time. They've had and a he lot of rest, the game. and then he was kind of surprisingly injured. I I've got. I've got the heebie-jeebies about so, it. I, I don't. I mean, like I'm worried. Uh, the you know, if pro football doc. He thinks that you know a thigh contusion shouldn't be a problem. He'll get in limited uh, practice this week. It should be good to go. I trust his. He's a doctor. I'm not a doctor, but I. Uh, <laughs> what? I'm not a doctor. Shocking, but if, the, like I'm. I'm worried about Gurley missing this week. If Gurley and David Johnson miss, would you rather start Chase Edmonds against Atlanta at home, or would you rather start Malcolm Brown against San Francisco? Chase, Chase Edmonds. Okay. Yeah, it would be Chase Edmonds. There's clarity there to the backfield. There's no worry about a Daryl Henderson, well, the, and the matchup is beautiful. Like the the concerns for Daryl Henderson, I like it, we could be surprised about how things work out with a timeshare between Malcolm Brown and Henderson. But Henderson has played two snaps ever <laughs> in his career. Like they've had the opportunity to get him on the field. But they have chosen to to have him just sit and learn. I would, yeah, I wouldn't be too worried about a fill-in game if Gurley went out for the season, and the team knew that they were going to have to adjust what they have to offer at running back. That's when I become more concerned about Henderson because the team would need to do They'd more. They'd work him in more. Yeah, yes. they would. Yeah, then it would be Darnell Anderson's oh, season. Stop. <laughs> stop. Darnell. All right, Case Keenum expected to start. Week six against the Dolphins. Yes. I'm so That's happy. That's great about news. That. That's great news if you are a Terry McLaurin owner. Yes, it is. I still expect this team to run the ball ridiculously high amounts under Bill Callahan. That's what he's come out and said. He said that it's not even about yards per carry, it's about <laughs> amount of attempts. He's my worry for Terry McLaurin. Like I'm so He's happy. like a caricature. He's so because I think the end of the quote then said the team that has the most rushing attempts usually wins. It was the end of the quote. It, which is hey stop. It, no, here's the thing, that's true, <laughs> right? You can't. I mean, you can't deny that what he's saying is true. I just think the reason why I is not understood by him. It he's is a former is, offensive line coach that began coaching in 1995. Yeah, you are correct, Jason. I'm not sure he understands the actual correlation. I think it was Mike Clay tweeted out, like, oh, crap. So, like, make sure Callahan doesn't know that the team that kneels the ball in the fourth quarter almost always wins. Oh, my gosh. All right. <laughs> Good news on Deshaun Jackson, I think. Unlikely to suit up this week. Okay, that's the bad news. The good news is they're targeting a week seven return of Deshaun Jackson. This is big news if you have Deshaun Jackson and you've been sad. This is great news if you have Carson Wentz and he's got another weapon coming back. I do think this on offense finds its rhythm over the course of this season and Deshaun Jackson is going to be a big part of it. We have Thursday night football updates for you. Philip Dorsett out. Saquon Ingram Shepard out. Don't forget to take your Thursday night players out of the flex position. There's a lot of flex type of players in this matchup. If you've got Josh Gordon. Uh, the, or, you mean on the Patriots side. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm just saying Josh Gordon, uh, James White, Sony Michelle, those are guys that you've been putting in your flex. Get them out of your flex. Mike, you got to set the alarm early. Uh, another reminder, there's a, a super oh, early game this oh, weekend. Oh, no. So that, that flex rule applies <sighs> for those players, too, that are starting the super early game. I think it's the Tampa Bay game. Correct. Tampa Bay, Carolina. Yeah, that's in London. That game's uh, for West Coasters. 
That's a 6.30 a.m. game. Ridiculous. So I need to put, you know, you got to put those guys into your position yes. spots as well. We'll have in or out tomorrow, more injury updates, get you ready for week six, and the game day alerts. You can get them. Jointhefoot.com. It's one of the many perks of being a supporter of the show, an official Foot Clan member at jointhefoot.com. And Sunday Live, one hour before Sunday kickoff, Mike goes live answering last-minute start-sit questions. The kickoff uh, being the when football is actually supposed to start. Oh, you didn't want to get boxed into a no. 5.30 a.m.? No, I will, I will not be on 5.30 West Coast time. I, I would be real frightened to see you awake at that hour. <laughs> That'd be a real scary thing. I will sound. I think you're a little less intimidating without the big beard. Sure. You know, just as a person. But I'd still be mighty frightened of you. The uh, the black circles under the eyes would be, <laughs> I, I would look like a a robber from a cartoon. <laughs> they would say this man is about to burgle. Uh, news and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Don't miss a single piece of impactful fantasy football news. <laughs> what are you chuckling Dude, about? Over I don't there? know why I found that so funny, <laughs> but the verb burgle. It's is, very fun. I use it anytime I get a chance. Why do we not do that more? <laughs> I, if you're a burglar, you burgle? Oh, yes. man. I've been, as in, in when it happens to you, I have been burgled. Oh, it's just a really funny this word. Dude's about to burgle. <laughs> yes. Jason Sorry, that tickled. really tickled. It <laughs> tickled me. Uh, you got me good. Um, as like I said, news and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Grab the app today. Before we get into the fantasy forecast, I want to thank the studio sponsor pristine auction we have been long long time partners with pristine auction close friends with the guys that run pristine auction and i could tell you firsthand th the reason why the partnership works so well is because of how awesome they are pristine auction is they're they're an auction site that has thousands upon thousands of legitimate verified signatures on collectible items on memorabilia on football jerseys and we have a debut today i don't even know if you guys noticed oh, oh that's Kyler beautiful Kyler murray signed a jersey everything that we get that's awesome you look at our set and you're like wow where do they it's pristine auction it's an auction so every time you bid you bid whatever you want you try to steal these things away at good values and you don't pay anything unless you get it if you've got a gift coming up for your 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 pops or anyone in your life one of those just, halloween gifts they're um <laughs> yes it, for halloween they're amazing you've got to check them out new auctions every day that's pristineauction.com you can use the code ballers at sign up and make sure you let them know you found out about them through us and foot clan you're loving the football. You're loving it on Thursday. You're loving your Amazon Prime membership. I'm not going to ask, are you a member? Because I know that you are. We all are. We're all living that Amazon life. But a part of that Amazon life that you may not know about, Thursday night football. That's right. Thursday night football has returned to Prime Video for a third season. You can catch all the action on your TV, on the web, on your mobile, anywhere in the world. The experience is next level. When you're burgling. <laughs> when you're avoiding being burgled look prime videos x-ray feature you got to check it out because you can access those next gen stats play history team information it's available on ios android fire tablets fire tv and if you're ready to hear a new take on the game you can switch over to sport broadcast legends hannah storm and andrea kramer for the play-by-play -play. so if you don't have cable or you simply want to experience the future of football tune in this thursday Coverage begins at 7 Eastern. Kickoff is at 8.20 Eastern. Also available on Fox and NFL Network. NFL Network simulcast subject to change. Thursday Night Football is presented by Bud Light Platinum. Fantasy Forecast. Before we jump into the forecast, I just want to... Uh, our, our waivers just ran. So I just wanted to highlight what happened in on our waiver wire. And you may be thinking, well, why is your waiver wire running again? It's not waiver day. We have it on continuous. Which is awesome. So it, we have we have the fab waiver system and the continuous where it opens, it runs all the claims that people have put in, and then it shuts down. It's not just a free-for-all smorgasbord. Whoever works on a computer has access to the breaking news players. So Jason 
Mm-hmm. You are now the proud owner once again <laughs> of Malcolm Brown. When did you drop Malcolm Brown? Yesterday. So, you dropped him yesterday? Yes, yeah, so when yesterday's waivers ran, I was talking to Brooks. I missed that. I'm glad I did, you I did. I did not miss it. That, I actually got paranoid when Jason, when you told Mike early in the show, and you go, are you over there running to the waiver wire? I'm like, why'd you say that? You think you were paranoid? <laughs> so here's the deal. I've been holding on to Malcolm Brown for obvious the whole reasons. Season. The he's whole had Malcolm season. Brown the whole season. And here's what happened. I thought to myself, well, look, he's not even touching the field. Todd Gurley's on 94% of snaps. We've got two IR spots. I wanted to pick up John Ross, who's coming back. He's he, you know, he's, he wanted to be sneaky. Put John Ross put, on the IR and then pick him up again and, the and, next day. And pick up Malcolm Brown for like and a what dollar. Ha- and what happens? And then right after the waivers run, the news comes out that Doug Gurley's out. I'm like, I just dropped him. So now I, I knew, picked him up. I knew how 20. mad you must have been, and you couldn't talk about it yesterday because oh, you didn't want us to know exactly. about it. Exactly. I knew it. <laughs> Oh, when we did drop God. it like it, Mike didn't even follow the advice. We did drop it like it's hot yesterday on the show. We look at it. All the players dropped off. First name that pops out is Malcolm Brown. Yeah. The news breaks. I go, oh, okay. For all right. 25, I, I burned your, $25 is, of fab yeah. so I could it, get an injured John Ross, essentially. Uh, this is your Nick Chubb oh, moment. Oh, this is spectacular. Yes, and, but it worked out that you paid up to go get him yep. after you dropped him. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's some fun drama. That's really funny. All right, fantasy forecast. Teams on by Bears, Bills, Colts, Raiders. Let's get into the week six matchups. The early London game. Panthers at three and two take on the Buccaneers at two and three. This game is a, uh, a tight one. That's how Vegas sees it. Panthers are two and a half point favorites. It's a 47 and a half point over under. And like I said, the game is early. It's 930 Eastern time in London. Like the chickens aren't even up. I don't, the I roosters, don't know when the chickens get up, man. The, ro- well, the roosters get up with the sun. I'm saying over here, living in the best time zone, <laughs> the roosters are not awake for this game. I'm not surprised you want them to schedule this game around you. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> <laughs> you know, last week they had a London game. It was 1 p.m. It was really oh, it was glorious. fine. Nobody yeah. noticed. Maybe that's why. Maybe they need you to notice. <laughs> All right. I like it because I get up early, so I like having football on right away. But we've got the Jameis Winston, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin experience on the Tampa side. We've got the Christian McCaffrey. I I wanted to bring it up because he missed practice yesterday too, so you don't want to leave him out of the equation. But unlike David Johnson and Todd Gurley, his head coach came out and said, Wednesday is the new normal. We're going to give him that day off. They should probably give him Thursday off as well. Look, as a fantasy owner, this is awesome. This is saying – no, we're not adjusting his workload. We're just going to give him more days off. He's fine. That's a dream come true. Let and all of his work be on Sunday. And then yeah. every week as a fantasy owner, you don't see Christian McCaffrey miss practice on Wednesday, and then you just have that slight bit of fear inside. That's true. So, yeah, when Marshawn Lynch used to miss practice yes. every week. Oh, gosh. That was the worst. All right, let's 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 look at this game. I really like uh, Jameis Winston's opportunity in this one. It's got a high over under. I love the offense and what they're doing in Tampa in terms of using Jameis Winston. He's They're leading the league in the last four weeks at yards per attempt. Jameis Winston's up at the top. You have two elite wide receivers, clearly. You've got Chris G- Goblin. <laughs> was that you deciding if you should that go was for me it deciding. or not? I don't know if it's disrespectful when you're the number one wide receiver in fantasy football to be called a goblin or not. He's gobbling up the targets. Thank you. He is. Now we're now we're using two different meanings of yes. it. Chris but, Turkey Godwin. Um, but Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, Evans leads the NFL in air yards. He's the fourth highest at twenty point two yards per reception. But you have a you know, you had a super disappointing week last week. He got goosed. Uh, but you, are, you're playing him, right? Yeah, yeah, you are one hundred percent. You have to, you have to keep playing Mike Evans. It, I mean, imagine having his monster games on your bench. Two of the last three weeks, he's been a top ten wide receiver. But it is concerning because three of five weeks, he's been a major disappointment. I mean, as a Mike Evans owner, I cry on the inside every time Chris Goblin touches the ball. So let let me. We're gonna play Godwin. We're gonna play Evans. I've got an idea here for Mike Evans. All right. Something that could help motivate him. And like the You're going to take matters into your own hands here? I am. I am. And this is for fantasy football purposes and just some extra player motivation. So, 
back in the day, you know, when someone committed a crime, they had to then wear the the, the scarlet letter, you know? Mm-hmm. Give him a scarlet zero. He has to pin that to his jersey and wear that to remind himself that he gave us zero points. You think shame is the key? I think so. I think Mike Evans would look down at that zero. You think that was a real good time in our history, the scarlet letter era? Well, I wasn't saying that, <laughs> <laughs> but it worked. <laughs> I think um, I think we'll really have to think hard, long and hard about that, Mike. Uh, I'm gonna think, just give us some thought. Don't for, don't forget in Mike Evans' life, he's got Twitter on his shoulder, letting him know. Ah, <laughs> you goosed me. All right. On the other side of the ball at wide receiver, that's to me where it gets interesting. It's a very difficult decision there. Tampa's given up thir- 323 passing yards a game. Exactly. The matchup is great. But you've been pretty disappointed with Curtis Samuel and DJ Moore. Uh, I, you know, this is a, the week where players go on by. We've got injuries to deal with, and you need to sometimes make starts from deep on your bench or from the waivers. And I, I think you know Curtis Samuel. To me, he's been getting the targets over DJ Moore in general with uh, Kyle Allen. I, I think you could do worse than starting him if if you're in a position of need. It's difficult because you have to make you have to make the call that this will be the game. And it's hard with a player like that. Curtis Samuel hasn't had the production, so then you are making the the leap on the basis of a you know, matchup. But it's not just matchup. It's the matchup plus it's Will Fuller, right? What one of the things that Will Fuller had uh, is lightning speed and a ton of air yards. Mm-hmm. Curtis Samuel, yep, is he has more air yards right now than Cooper or Odell Beckham. He, it's just not happening. Yeah. And with the matchup, I think Kurt, I almost made Curtis Samuel my yeah. start of the week, but it was, it was a little too scary. Um, but I, I, I think you, I think Curtis Samuel is a good play. All right, Jay, if you have you have Christian McCaffrey in our league of records, so are you stashing Reggie Bonifon the the phenomenon? Oh, I like it, and you darn well know that I am. If you look at the are waivers you? that ran this morning, I added Bonifon. Okay. When you've got a McCaffrey, uh, I want to I want to protect him. And now that there appears to be some clarity, I mean the fact that the guy came in and did did well ripped off a huge touchdown. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I've got Bonifant on the roster now, <laughs> and I like saying Bonifant. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I thought we were gonna go the so bon- I thought Bonbons was gonna be the oh, that, the way that, that would we be good, went. but I'm trying bon- to lose weight, Andy. <laughs> How dare be, you bring up sensitive. Bonbons? <laughs> you gonna bring up pastries next? Goodness. Should I? Greg Pastry. Oh, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are also, we, you, you're what playing are we, Greg Olson. Yes. You are, huh? Yes, 100%. The After tight end goosed you last week. I, I get it. Would put, just put the zero on him. Scarlet zero no, for you too, right. Greg Olson. All right. The tight end position is scoring bountiful bonbon points on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Texans, Chiefs. Texans three and two. Chiefs four and one. Games at Arrowhead. Chiefs are four and a half point favorites. It's got a sweet and sexy... <laughs> Oh, that's yeah. the over under guys and I'm looking forward to this one I want to see Tyreek Hill play football again it would be great for the Patrick Mahomes owner I have a start of the week in this one that we'll bring up later but let's let's just start at quarterback Deshaun Watson Patrick Mahomes I think you can play him <laughs> they're both it's nice. just worth saying like through five weeks they are performing exactly proportional to their draft position the quarterback one off the board was Mahomes he's the quarterback one the quarterback two off the board was Watson he's the quarterback two through five weeks Mahomes has had touchdown troubles over the last two weeks but he's averaging 355 passing yards and Deshaun Watson went absolutely bonkers last week so at running back confidence level in Carlos Hyde Duke Johnson in this game I have the look you can play Carlos Hyde if you have to he's averaging 16 touches a game he's over four carry it's not it's not a sexy pick at all, but we're in the, the doldrums of the bye week, so I think Carlos Hyde is a, a fine replacement if you have to put yeah, him in. Yeah, the, the the thing about Carlos Hyde, so you know, got a ton of carries last week, had a had a very good game, but they were blowing out Atlanta. And while we've seen the recipe for beating the Chiefs, which is run with your main predominant Sure. You know, that could work, and I fully expect Hyde to get a lot of work in the beginning of the game. But if the Chiefs look better than last week and and can move the ball, which I expect them to have a real nice bounce back game here, 
it might end up being a Duke Johnson type of game. I do think that the running back position from the Texans will be putting up fantasy points against the Chiefs. And so it's just a matter of trying to pick which one in a game with this high of an over-under with Pat Mahomes on the other side of the field. I lean Duke Johnson for the first time this year. Hmm. And he's also been great. Like yes. He hasn't been great for fantasy at all. He's been terrible for fantasy because they're not giving him enough touches. But like you look at his elusive rating. You look at his you know yards after contact. You look at just about any metric, and he's been awesome. Uh, let's take a look at Damian Williams. Do you have confidence in him 100%. in this matchup? He came back. Uh, like The biggest fear for Damian Williams coming into the season, what's his actual job security? If he misses time and then someone in the backfield performs, does he get his job back? Like That was the huge fear. And then that fear came to fruition right away. Damian Williams missed time. Shady was fine. Daryl Williams was fine. Damian came right back and took his job. He's taking all the running back carries, and he's still getting plenty of targets. So, yes, I have 100% confidence playing him. He's, he's this a week, pretty good trade target. This week, Damian sure. Williams is the running back 23, according to our rankings. Carlos Hyde, RB 27. Hopkins, Fuller. I've been trying to acquire Hopkins wherever I can. He's got the third highest target share in football at 28%, and he's being overshadowed by that insane performance by Will Fuller. But all, you know, Hopkins, we know what he is. Yeah, he's one of the best wide receivers in the National Football League who is going to end the season probably still as a top five wide receiver. And the fact that he is right now nowhere near that means the second half of the year is, is going to be good. Tyreek Hill, if he plays, how does that make you feel about Watkins, Hardman, Demarcus Robinson? What do I, you do if Tyreek Hill is active? Because I... I, don't think I tend Watkins, to believe he will be active. I don't think Watkins plays. I was, as a Tyreek Hill owner, in, in, in oh, 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 oh blood he has he has definitely been cold blooded to his fantasy yes, owners. He has. He's like, hey guys, watch this. <laughs> now you got to start me. <laughs> he basically crafted a witch's brew of of paint on the course of this season because by exploding in week one, he doesn't do that in week one. No. Everybody's you, calm, collected. I call that the Chipotle. Mm, I get it. Because right, right away, it's it's freaking fantastic. But then then after you ate it. There's hell to pay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. How does uh, Al Borland's in the studio back? He was out for a couple of days. I'm looking at him right now. I know you had a chance to really sell Sammy Watkins in week one. Did you uh, take advantage of any of those opportunities? Oh, he's shaking his head. No. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Because we all love Chipotle. Oh, no. Look, right. The Lizard King, uh, here, here's what happened. He was dealing with a hamstring and shoulder issue last week in practice. Then they decided to put him out there, and it and he re-aggravated it. Yeah. Now he's dealing with this. Why would they put him back out there again? I don't think he plays either. So I, I expect him to be out. Now, I, as the Tyreek Hill owner in the League of Record where – I'm really needing a win this week. I'm trying to figure out if he's going to play. I watched a, you know, the 10-minute press conference with Andy Reid last night, trying to dig deep into whether or not he's going to play. Andy Reid has absolutely no control over the situation. He wants him to play. Um, it's just a matter of what you know his MRIs are going to say on, on the, the joint. The pro football doc does not expect him to play, and in okay. fact says he's worried about him playing even next week. So it, it, you, there's there's no way to know until it's announced that he is in or out, but I think you have to prepare for him to be out because if he's out and Watkins is out, Andy, I know you picked up Brian Pringle. Yes, you're playing him. Yeah, I mean. You got it. There, there are other good options there. Demarcus Robinson becomes a great start. Are you McCall talking about Hardman? Byron Pringle? Yes, Byron Pringle. Yeah, so Robinson, brother. Hardman. <laughs> I think we just say, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have immense confidence in the outcome for these players when Hill and Watkins are out. You know that one of them will hit, but you don't necessarily, you know, last week it was Pringle quickly when Watkins went out and all of a sudden that was the player that was open downfield. The, the problem with Kansas City's offense is – that you are missing Eric Fisher on the left side of the defensive line. 
His absence is why Mahomes got hurt twice last week. Offensive line? What did I say? Defensive. Yeah, I apologize. Yes, the offensive line. His primary blindside protection. It's why he got stepped on last week. What they're doing on that side of the field is causing problems. And without time in the pocket, you don't get a chance for the speed of McCole Hardman, Demarcus Robinson, to uh, exploit a defense and, uh, and his own defense. You you have problems at up front. And so players like Travis Kelsey, I have immense confidence in being able to win in man coverage as opposed to Byron Pringle coming out and distancing himself from man-to-man -man corners. That's my problem is I don't really know who's going to emerge from that situation. So, yes, I picked him up. Uh, and I think you can flex him if those guys yeah. are out. I'd be, I, I, I don't have a problem with that because the game's got a 55-point over-under. Exactly. So. This, and, and I would slam the over. I just won't call him safe. I will say that. You can play oh, him, no. but I'm not going to call him safe even if Tyreek Hill and Sammy Watkins he's, miss the game. He's the exact same thing that McCole Hardman has been and Demarcus yes, Robinson has that's been. That's fair. They are, they are lightning in a bottle, and if you open it up, you're either going to get a really cool show or get struck in the face by lightning. <laughs> one of those two things is great. but I don't, One of them is very bad. One of them sucks. All right. Okay. Or it turns you into a superhero. You're playing Hopkins and Fuller. Are you chasing points with Darren Fells? I told you guys earlier this week, I certainly am not. He had two touchdowns last week, no. but uh, it was on not. two catches. and Preferably not. Okay. All right. We good to move on? Yep. Well, uh, Seahawks, 4-1, and one, take on the Browns in Cleveland. The Browns are 2-3 and three and trying to figure things out right now. Russell Wilson has been arguably in my – I mean – through five weeks, there's been no more impressive quarterback on film to me than Russell Wilson, completing 73% of his passes, hyper-efficient because he's great. And Baker Mayfield's been the most disappointing quarterback yes, through five he, weeks. he has. So this is going to be a difficult situation. The Seahawks are one-and-a-half-point road favorites. It's a 46-and-a-half-point over-under. And the, this Browns defense is not holding up. What do you do with the Brown side of the ball? Let's start there. You know Nick Chubb is in to yep. your, in your lineup yes. each and every week, averaging 21.8 touches per, per game. Beckham, he's got a 53.5% catch rate. That's the lowest of his career. Uh, Last I'm, year, Landry had a 54% catch rate. What are you smirking about over there, Jason? I'm smirking about the fact that you have to start Odell Beckham. Oh, uh, yes. You certainly do. But you don't really want – I mean – it hasn't worked out except for one broken long touchdown run, which obviously is completely in his arsenal, which is why you have to start him. But Andy, why don't you bring up your? You said you wanted to bring up your trade. Sure. Yeah. Yesterday I traded. I made the decision. Now we play in a two flex league. A lot of our trade advice over the years has been, you know, a lot of people play in one flex league, and in those leagues, it's almost. I almost always advise, look, get the best player in the deal, the perceived best player in the deal. Two-for-one deals, you end up with the one, you get to sign somebody, you're filling out a smaller roster. But we moved to a two-flex format in our league of records, so we have a little bit more. We got more positions to fill with consistency, 12-man league, two-flex. I made the call yesterday. I'm getting out of the OBJ business in that league. I've had him for a year and a half. It's a three-keeper league. He destroyed me last year with injuries, didn't help my team. This year... I'm waiting for the chemistry to happen. I don't believe you can fix an over offensive line overnight, which means that how is that chemistry going to happen when Baker Mayfield's on his back half the time? So I traded Odell Beckham Jr., and I traded him for, for Robert Woods and Michael Gallup. Mm -hmm. And I really I haven't done a deal like that before. A lot of people out there might be gasping. <gasps> you know, two de good, decent wide receivers for a superstar – but I, I like it on your side, especially considering your team needs. I think Robert Woods is an extremely good buy-low guy right now. He's got zero touchdowns on the year, but he's still on pace for 1,300 receiving yards. And and Michael Gallup. Say, I mean, Michael Gallup is the buy-low. Both me. of these guys. Like, he has not established any sort of foundation. see how many targets he had last week? Yes. He's, he's 14. Yes, he's... His target share is incredible. His his air yards are incredible. When he's played, he unfortunately had that span of games he missed because of the injury. But he is exploding. 
I, I put a rest of season poll up yesterday because we need validation as fantasy owners that we did the right thing. <laughs> and we can. And 77% of the Foot Clan agreed with the – they prefer Woods and Gallup over the back half of the season than OBJ. The fact of the matter is there are very few players as talented as Odell Beckham Jr. in football. And clearly last week they were making special efforts to get him uniquely involved in the offense. All that being said – And special teams. And special mm -hmm. teams. All that being said – Odell Beckham Jr. will always have the potential to win you the week and being the number one fantasy wide receiver. But I don't think consistency is going to be something you can count on if this offense stays in the bottom third of football. That's my concern with it. So, you know, in three games played, Michael Gallup's the wide receiver seven in points per game. I think he is a buy low because his name hasn't been established. But on film, I've liked everything I saw from preseason. You guys know that. So it was, it was time to, to move out of the Odell Beckham waiting game. Yep. You still have to play him because he's Odell Beckham. Yeah, and, and the Browns' schedule opens up the second half of the year. I think the next two weeks are hard. they got the Seahawks. I want to say the Patriots, or the Patriots are in two weeks, something like that. After that, they've got a pretty uh, easy schedule, so hopefully things do turn around for the Browns. Through five weeks, Landry is the wide receiver 32. Odell Beckham is the wide receiver 35. And the offense has to get rolling. That's all that has to happen. All these players, the chips will fall the right direction. Ricky Seals-Jones is a desperation tight end play. He is receiving targets. He almost had a great catch in this last game, but it's desperation mode. On the other side, you got to start Will Disley at this point. He's, oh, yeah. He's, oh, he's big Montana. Oh, yes. He's an absolute beast. <laughs> well, we're saving that. We're okay. saving that for Thank later. Thank goodness. Thank for goodness. later. Tyler, oh, no. Tyler Lockett. <laughs> Is the wide receiver 10 on the year? He's out there. Chris Carson, you're starting him. What do you do with DK Metcalf? Is he a flex play for you this week against Cleveland? This is a He's in flex consideration. The Browns defense, I mean, they're they're fifth, they're ranked fifth against fantasy wide receivers, so it's on paper is not a great matchup. But as has been very evident this year, Russell Wilson is not to be taken on paper. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Bengals, 0-5, take on the Ravens, 3-2. and two. This game's in Baltimore. The Ravens are healthy favorites, 11.5 points. It's a 48-point over-under. If you look at Lamar Jackson right now in the season, he's the uh, quarterback three on the week for us, by the way. He's on pace for 35 passing touchdowns, 986 rushing Oof. yards. Oof. He's averaging 10 attempts per game. He's probably as safe as you can get near as safe as you can get at the quarterback position at this point because of the rushing attempts. Mm -hmm. So you're obviously playing him in a favorable matchup at home. I'm sure you'd like to see Mark Andrews out there. Mark Andrews is missing practice on the reg. Yeah, he's he's been dealing with the, the same issue uh, the whole season. Obviously, over the last three weeks, you've been much – you've been disappointed in Mark Andrews compared to, you know, he gets off to the unbelievable start of the first two weeks. You just assumed he's locked in as an every week, you know, he's he's leveled up. I think he is still very good. Um, this matchup against the Bengals, if you're looking at, um, you know, you go, oh, they, you know, they're top 10 against tight end. Mm -hmm. Some of that is a mirage. If you look at their last three weeks, they played teams that pretty much don't have tight ends. One of those was against the Steelers when they didn't have Vance McDonald, uh, you know, so um, I, I think Mark Andrews is a great play. We'll talk about him a little later. All right. Looking, looking at the Bengals side, we have to first say, Hey, wh what are the Ravens doing on defense this year? Last year in 2018, fourth against quarterbacks, second against running backs, sixth against wide receivers. It was the Baltimore Ravens, you know, and love this year has not been the case. They're 14th against quarterbacks, 23rd, in fantasy points against against the running back position, 24th against wide receivers. They've given up the fourth most passing yards per game. They're the one defense that actually got beat by Baker Mayfield in that offense. So this is not the same defense putting the same amount of pressure on the quarterback. That being said, this is a home matchup, so what can you really count on from the Bengals' side? Well, for the Ravens, their defense, I mean, they've just been – hit with injuries like Jimmy Smith they're hoping he is back soon Brandon Williams was out the week that Nick Chubb went nuclear on them so it's you think it's going to get better I do believe that it's going to get better and this so like this is one of those trends where right now the Ravens is a nice mashup for your fantasy players in six weeks that may not be the case so and that's why making the decisions five weeks in right can be difficult yeah yeah, yeah and I, I just also want to bring up I mean 
the Ravens lost a lot of key pieces in free agency. They they did add sure. Earl Thomas, but you know when you lose C.J. Uh, Mosley, Zadarius Smith, those those guys. Terrell Suggs departed finally. Yeah, I mean th th this isn't the defense of last year, and and while yeah, if they get some of these injured players back, they'll be better than what we've seen. I I just don't take the Baltimore Ravens as a super difficult matchup hmm. on defense right now. All right. Uh, I didn't mention Marquise Brown. I mean, obviously, Mark Ingram's in. Marquise Brown's dealing with the ankle injury. If he plays, are you playing him? I imagine. Yeah, but I'm adjusting expectations with Lamar Jackson. Just He's not going deep as much. Like, it, like we talked about this, where those first few weeks, it looked like Lamar Jackson was going to be right there with Patrick Mahomes, just slinging the ball all the time. But that, that disappeared quickly. Tyler Boyd on the other side. Would you rather start Tyler Boyd than Marquise Brown? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What about Auden Tate? Do you chase the touchdown last week? Is he still a desperation play? I mean, yes, he's still a desperation play. Flex at best, though. Yeah, I don't think you're chasing the touchdown because you know we we were talking about him as a desperation play before the touchdown, and the same situation exists where John Ross is out, AJ Green is out. He's a wide receiver too for a team that you assume is going to have to throw the ball a lot. Who's playing with a faster pace of play? So yeah. He, He's not the prettiest start, but it, you know, you and can he, throw him in there. He caught a touchdown, and he also early on in that game dropped what would have been an easy touchdown. So it was he was almost done for a big game. All right, we're going to do one more matchup on today's show before we hit the starts of the week. We'll cover the rest of the matchups on tomorrow's podcast episode. Saints four and one taking on the Jags at two and three. The Saints are one point road favorites. It's a forty four and a half point over under. Teddy Bridgewater had a big game last week. It's his first real relevant game at the position. He's kept the Saints uh, in the win column. Four touchdowns last week. Gardner Minshew. We have Minshew ranked higher than Bridgewater this week. He's at home. He's got a 9-1 to touchdown to interception ratio so far. His fantasy finishes quarterback 15, 15, 16, 13, and then last week quarterback 8. Is that correct? So... It's been improving. I'm sure he feels more comfortable with the offense. He has a weapon, DJ Chark. The Saints defense has given up fantasy points to the quarterback and wide receiver position, not really to the running back. How do you feel about Gardner in this uh, matchup? Uh, you know, the I, I don't love Gardner here necessarily. I know, Mike, you're a little bit higher on him. He's been consistent. He's not been, you know... Uh, he had, a he's quarterback had no, 25 ever. No bust game. He has not exploded, but he's also been he's been very safe for you. Yeah, I mean, in fantasy, uh, in a normal league, I'm expecting, like, I don't want to start someone that I don't think is going to be top 12. You're always wanting to at least have a top 12 quarterback on the week. You know, if you're 15, okay, it wasn't the worst week in the world, but it's, it's not winning. And that's kind of where I see the Jaguars. I think that this is going to be – uh, a lower scoring game personally you've got uh, you know two teams that have good pieces on defense Jalen Ramsey was back to practice he's playing this the week. owner it's already, vowed he's it's already playing yeah so that's been a big loss for the Jacksonville Jaguars defense the last few weeks so Teddy Bridgewater yeah he had a great week last week I don't think he's going to have a great week here this is just a game that I I don't see being a fantasy bonanza I think that's fair. Right now, the Saints have given up the 10th most passing yards. It's interesting. Everybody wants to talk about DJ Chark, and that's fair, right? He's been excellent. Oh, yes. It's interesting, though, that DJ Chark and D.D. Westbrook have the same target share on the season at 21.9%. DJ Chark is ranked much higher for most analysts, but is D.D. a sneaky start here where yes. you, know, you have a, a slot cornerback in P.J. Williams that has given up the third most fantasy points to yeah. slot wide receivers? He's not good. <laughs> no, he's not. He's he's not. And DD is good. Yeah, and DD is a good wide receiver. It will be interesting to see. Like Marshawn Lattimore doesn't always shadow, but in the games where they've played against big time wide receivers like Hopkins and this past week of of uh, Evans, don't talk about that. <laughs> oh, I apologize. Thank you. Uh, will will DJ Chark get that treatment? I'm very interested to see what what the Saints choose to do. But but if, your point is If he is does, that, though, it yes. could be a problem. Yes. Well, no, a, a problem for him, but, yes, but, but not that's for Didi. where Didi is going to – I mean, you saw it from Chris Goblin 
last yes. week as he went off. D- uh, Didi is a really sneaky start here. Uh, Jared Cook or O.J. Howard this week? Jared Cook in this Jared matchup Cook. or O.J. Howard? What if your fantasy league gives you points for foul ball catches, like at baseball games? Is he going to do it again? Like, Can he, oh, yeah, in the, the middle of a game, do that? Probably, I don't, I don't think not. you can retroactively apply that. Right? No, that's a good point. That's but good point. Jared Cook, six targets each of the past two weeks. He's he, but, but behind Kamara and Michael Thomas. Teddy Bridgewater is going to Jared Cook. Yeah, I, I would go Cook over Howard. Starts of the week. All right, week six, starts of the week time. Mike, I'm going to uh, hand you the baton. Let's All start right. at the quarterback position. Kyler Murray. He's up on the wall for a reason with the signed jersey from Pristine Auction. Atlanta. That is the matchup for Mr. Murray this week. They are giving up the most points to the quarterback position. And my notes here say when Marcus Mariota goes 227-3, and three, RIP Ooh, to your defense. I like to that. To your D. I should have finished it that way. Yeah, that would have been better. I'm going to take Stick the landing. The quarterback right on the other side of the field. This game looks like you've got two defenses Juicy. They, they can't hold up. So Matt Ryan, who had an explosive game last week, you you were disappointed a little bit over the over the previous few weeks. He's had some some of those you know quarterback fifteen type of performances, but he's going to be a monster this week. Whenever I think about like if they wanted to throw to Julio Jones every play, they can. Who in the Arizona Cardinals can guard a Mohamed Sanu, let alone a oh. Calvin Ridley, let alone a Julio Jones? Sanu is real sneaky. This so week. I mean I mean it's it's one of those situations where. These two quarterbacks are going to be great. You want pieces in this game. All right. I'm actually going to go a little deeper and throw the trust and confidence at Jameis Winston. I'm going to do the London matchup for Jameis Winston against Carolina. They just gave up 28 to Gardner Minshew. Trust is a powerful thing, and you are seeing a trust both from uh, – when you look at Bruce Arians and what he's doing in this offense, Jameis is doing what his – Bruce Arians quarterbacks do. He's averaging the highest yards per attempt, the highest touchdown percentage. He has two elite wide receivers, and he's going to be put in a position to where, you know, at the end of the day, Bruce Arians is going to trust his passing game. You saw last week, we didn't talk about it in the matchup today. Maybe we should have. But Ronald Jones, Peyton Barber, Dare Agunboale, it's just there's a, like 33% of the yes. snaps each. And so you can't trust any of them right now. No. So I have, I'm going to put the, my confidence in Jameis Winston having the opportunity to air it out in this one, especially after seeing, you know, Gardner. So what do you guys think of, at the running back position? Well, I'm going with, this is more just to save my Twitter mentions because people are going to be asking, do I play Austin Eckler? Yes. Yes, you continue to play Austin Eckler. Oh, you're doubling up. I am. Two straight weeks, I Austin am. Eckler. Because the, all the reports the are – pat you know, on the butt. Melvin Gordon, he's going to be more involved in the game plan, as he should. He's the number one running back for this team, still working his way back. But Eckler, he's going to get that – he's going to get attempts. He's going to get targets. Like he's He will still be involved in this game plan. And against the Steelers, I think that uh, – a way that the Chargers will have to move the ball is going to be dumping it off to Austin Eckler. So when you're – I think it's interesting. I mean, obviously everybody who's had Austin Eckler is riding that wave at this point. But when you look at Eckler – I'm let's still say hanging you, 10, let's man. Say, <laughs> let's say you have to make some decisions, though. Okay. Uh, Eckler, for a lot of teams, was acquired later, turned into a superstar. So you have other players that you're saying, okay – when Eckler falls out of favor, when Eckler's no longer the guy that he's been, I'm going to put this player in the lineup. Would you be playing Austin Eckler or would you be playing Sony Michelle tonight against Ooh, the Giants? Sony, those by, are guys back to back in our rankings. Yeah. Mike, so I'm not being fair to you, but Sony by a, by a by a hair. What about a guy like Philip Lindsay who's had some really big weeks? I don't like the matchup, so I'm going to go with Austin Eckler. Okay, so and I, the, the way what, that, a, what about <clears throat> throw this name out, Melvin Gordon. If you have both, once again, Ooh. yes. And I guess I guess I'm playing Mel. I don't know. <laughs> I know it's so hard. <laughs> Mike Pouncey is yeah on IR. That's a huge problem for the running game. And while Melvin Gordon is great in the passing game, Eckler's been I would phenomenal. Lean, I would lean Eckler in this matchup. The the way I'm viewing Austin Eckler is like I'm playing a game of 
of musical chairs, and I would rather keep playing with him in my lineup and get the dud game when it eventually happens than keep playing and, and him scoring a bunch of points on my bench. Yeah. I yeah, get that, it. that's that's fair, and we do have him. If you go to the website, the fantasyfootballers dot com, the start sit tool. If you plug those two players in, our consensus rankings have Austin Eckler two spots higher than Melvin Gordon. They're really close, but I think that you know we clearly lean that direction. For my running back start of the week, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again. I'm taking the same position on the other side of the field, Mike. In the Chargers game, I'm going with James Conner as a, a guy that you have to start this week. You lose Jalen Samuel. You're on your third string quarterback. The, they're, they're not going to be able to pass the ball, so they're going to have to rely on the run. And the Chargers are not built as a defense to stop the run. They are, they are one of those funneling defenses where they usually want you to run the ball. You're not going to be able to throw on them. So I think this is a volume play where, where James Conner is going to get – watch Philip Lindsay last week? <laughs> it, 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 yes. It, it, it kind of speaks yeah. to your point. Philip Lindsay just dissected and destroyed this defense last week. I don't mind the confidence play uh, with Connor and with Jan Samuels out. You have a guaranteed volume. I'm going to go Damian Williams against Houston at home at Arrowhead. Damian Williams coming back from the injury, like Mike said earlier. It was his backfield, and the narrative street here for me is the, the simple fact that right now Patrick Mahomes needs him. And when I say needs him, I mean in the passing game. He needs the Damian Williams effect on this offense. If Tyreek Hill doesn't play, Sammy Watkins is banged up, and, uh, you know, God forbid if something happens with that ankle and he's stuck in the pocket some more, he's just going to need Damian Williams in this offense. And I think you can play him against Houston. He's my start of the week. Our editor, Kyle the Borgogan, he did a really deep dive on – Is that the running back for the Panthers, the backup to McCaffrey? <laughs> yes. Uh, he did a really deep dive on vacated targets and where do they actually go. And he found a pretty strong correlation that when main targets are have disappeared from a team, running back targets – go up and this isn't a season-long thing we're looking at but I think that that would still hold true that Damian Williams will see an increased target share. you know he's gonna have what three four full-on downfield wheel route plays yeah mm -hmm. per game they just missed on him last week he's a burner and if one of those drops into his arms you're gonna be really really happy in this matchup this so. could be your Will Fuller start of the week I mean it, you know yeah, it, just a complete explosion game. I, I like him as as your start of the week. I can't. Can I use Will Fuller? His uh, performance last week as my of start points? of the week this week. <laughs> sure, yeah, that like, one will last you, for like three or four weeks. Right? If you cut it in half and you only get half of those yeah. points, you'd still have a great week. Well, I think people know to start Will Fuller at this point, especially against Kansas City. So I won't go back to the well there, but I will give you my wide receiver. I'm going to bring it home here. Larry Fitzgerald against Atlanta. The game's in Arizona. The car, you know, Larry's a better home play than he is a road play, and Atlanta is a wonderful play when you put a wide receiver in your lineup because Atlanta <laughs> is 32nd against the wide receiver position. The Cardinals' offense is still figuring out pass catching options outside of Larry right now. You have more talk about Andy Isabella. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna continue to work him into the lineup. You know how many a lot targets? Of, a lot of jet sweeps. You know how many targets Andy Isabella has on the year? How many? That would be zero. Fewer than jet sweeps. Fewer than jet sweeps. They uh, got to start doing the tap pass. Christian man. Kirk is big. Yeah, up. there's a he, target. The targets haven't been there for Keyshawn. I think Larry Fitzgerald has a big game, and we've talked about the red zone effectiveness. I think this is the one where they get in the red zone. Larry's going to have one of those touchdowns. Last week he got a target in the red zone right on the goal line. It was a weird call to end the half, but it was another screen pass two yards out. He could have ran it right in. I think this is the bounce back game for Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah, I like it. My start of the week at wide receiver Ooh. is in tonight's game. Jules, Julian Edelman, he had an awesome game last week. You're, you've lost Philip Dorsett. This is a game they're at home, projected to have 30-plus points. They wanna, they're they going to be in the situation where you run the ball, right? Well, that that's what passing the ball to Julian Edelman is. And you have an incredible matchup against Grant Haley, who is not good. I mean, this is a perfect matchup. I think that you're going to have another big performance, you know, near double-digit receptions, just, uh, you know, and, and a great option for a touchdown, just like the matchup he had last week where he got a touchdown. My start of the week at the wide receiver position, scary Terry McLaurin, the F1, whatever we're calling him these days. He gets to take on Miami, and this little stat nugget per our friend Scott Barrett. So last week, McLaurin – put up 51 yards against the Patriots. He was shadowed by Gilmore in that contest. 
This is just the third time in 22 games that Gilmore has given up 50 or more, or more yards to a single player who he was shadow covering. Terry McLaurin is really, really good. And he did it against Chicago. And now you have the bump that Case Keenum is back. Like He did that without Case Keenum. So against Miami, Terry McLaurin is in for me. Interesting. Yeah, I am. The only fear that I have is the changeover at head coach philosophically. And then, you know, does McLaurin end up seeing Howard? Does, does it matter? No, Probably not. not. To me. Case, the Case Keenum thing, it's great. It's a great opportunity for Case Keenum. You've seen that rapport already, but I just I want to know that Terry McLaurin is going to get more than, you know, five targets in this game. I'm not positive because Bill Callahan is there. But uh, you know, it little little bit of uh, courtesy start of the week here. A little extra. Sure. I, we'll talk about it in the in the matchup tomorrow. But keep your eye on Adrian Peterson. Because, oh goodness! Because yes. the matchup mixed with what they're going to, how many times they're going to give Adrian Peterson the ball? He could be it a could. really really yep. safe, strong play this week. And, and if what you believe about Ke you know Keenum's the best quarterback there in right. terms of moving the offense for sure. So if you're going to put yourself in a position with more goal line opportunities, at least you've got that with Case who, Keenum. Who wins this game? Does Miami, you know, at home, do, coming off the bye, do they, do, they, do they pull it out? I don't think so. I don't either. I, I think it's Washington. And so if Washington wins the game and they're because up. They're gonna they have, they'll have more rushing attempts. Right. And it'll be pr he'll be like, see, I told I you. I told you. And everyone's <laughs> going to go, it's the Dolphins. Yeah. You know who else is gonna, going to him? surprise people in this game is Mark Walton running back for the Miami Dolphins. He might. Mark Walton is going to get the most work in that backfield, I believe, this week. Or, oh, or over be, Drake? It'll be close. Yeah, because it, because of the matchup and because of this. They want to see what they have in Walton now. He's moved past Kalen Balazs in the depth chart. That's true, yes. And uh, he's actually put up some like decent yard per carry numbers in production in the offense. They seem to like him and his work ethic. So, Jason, Mark Walton could be coming <laughs> back to the oh, show. hey. <laughs> it's me, Mark Waldenberg. <laughs> Say hi to your mother for me. You couldn't even remember his I don't name. even remember money. It's, um, it's been a while. Yeah, it's it's been a long while. Uh, All right, we, tight ends. Moving on to tight ends. My tight end start of the week is Mark Andrews. I think he's going to have a big bounce back week. He's you know been a little bit disappointing uh, the last few weeks, but uh, this is a matchup against the Bengals defense that is not good. It looks good on paper against the tight end. But that's what I was mentioning earlier. Their schedule the last three games was the Cardinals, who don't really utilize tight ends, the Steelers without Vance McDonald, and the Bills. No, you know, Dawson Knox, my apologies. You're not quite there yet. So, I, you know, this is a, a game where they're going to win. They're going to win big. He's got 23% target share at tight end. That's phenomenal. Yeah. So I expect Just him need to him have out there, which he should be. a big week. All right, my start of the week at tight end. Oh, yeah! Do I need to say anything else? No. no. Just let it play. On pace. Stop your, shut your mouth. 74 shut, catches. Shut up. 838 yards. Jason's feeling it. 13 He's touchdowns. And a really, really good quarterback throwing him the ball and one that trusts him. You saw that a lot last week. Trust him downfield. Trust him in the red zone. It's kind of Tyler Lockett and Will Disley, and then you know he'll find receptions for DK Metcalf or David Moore or those players. So Will Disley started the week against Cleveland. Not to mention he has his own theme song. Yeah, that helps. He does. It helps. Now, uh, Mike, this is an interesting one. All right, I'm going with it because he is a a tight end that a lot of people picked up off the waiver wire to play this you, week, yourself included. Yeah, and I'm I'm giving the advice that I am following. I Went hard in the paint after this guy. And speaking of going hard in the paint, we're hoping that Gerald Everett, Mr. Mount Everett, can scream down the paint, throw the dunk in NBA jam style, and get on fire because he is absolutely heating up. 19 targets combined the past two weeks. He is running a ton of routes. This is the guy that Sean McVay drafted him to be. It's just taken a very, very long climb. Look, when you're climbing Everest – Takes a while. It takes a while. Years, apparently. <laughs> it takes over three takes years. About three years. It's a three-year climb. That's what so, I hear. I, I'm just letting people know this is what I am doing. I am playing Everett. I dumped OJ Howard in my money league to pick up Everett and play him this week. I'm going to warn you though. If we go down, we're going. Not down everybody together. comes down off of Everett. That's that's oh, true. Okay. That's true. 
A lot so of dead could, bodies up there. It could be trouble, we're, but we're hoping we don't have a human toboggan situation. But you're jumping forward a week. You're not waiting for the on fire. You want to be ahead of it. Yep. Three weeks in a row, and Brandon Cooks could miss. You know that. Yes, could miss the game. We'll see what happens there. All right, those are our start of week. Uh, the start of the week starts. Those start, are the starts start of the week. The week. <laughs> start of the weeks. You know when we go over the sixty minute mark, <laughs> the wheels they yes. fall off. Wheels fall off a little bit. Jason, you prepare your. Yes. <laughs> Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Last week's kicking team was new and defiant. So let's use old man strength with the Falcons, Matt Bryant. Wait a minute. Are you you're calling R Robbie Gould? I'm talking about the new, brand new uh, long snapper and the brand new uh, uh, play uh, holder okay. that couldn't ever get the ball down right. He gotcha. he was like a really good play from attempts, but you watch the game and you I mean he he should have had 20 would, points. Uh, this is the kind of research you get. He understands the depth chart on the special on team situations. That's holders. That, yeah. 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 There you go. That's the research you get with the locked and loaded boom, boom. I just love kickers so much. So much. So much. <sighs> Can't say it. All right. In and out uh, tomorrow on the show. We've got the game day alerts at jointhefoot.com, as I mentioned, and Sunday Live. We'll be back with more matchups on tomorrow's episode of the podcast, as well as ballers on a budget, and likely a lot of injury news. We'll see what the trend is like for David Johnson. We'll see what it's like for Todd Gurley, Brandon Cook, Sammy Watkins, some of these players that we're really keeping an eye on. And uh, depending on what happens, you may be able to exploit some waiver wire pickups to give you a, a big week for your fantasy team. So we want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. A signed Lamar Jackson jersey yesterday on Pristine Auction sold for $81.90. Nice. You can go to pristineauction.com, use the code BALLERS, and that'll do it for us. We will see you tomorrow, Foot Clan. Thank you so much for joining us. Going to finish up those matchups. Protect it your house from Berg. Burgling. Enjoy the game. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Today's episode of the show is brought to you by Muggsy Jeans, the most comfortable men's jeans ever made. That is not an exaggeration. That's all I have. Muggsy jeans. Their high tech fabrics are so soft and flexible, they feel as comfortable as sweatpants. Do your legs a favor, head to Muggsy.com, grab your own pair of ridiculously comfortable jeans today. Listeners can use the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off. That's M U G S Y.com with the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off your pair of Muggsy jeans.